I am Dr. Subramaniam. I am a senior consultant neurologist, kidney transplant surgeon, a robotic and laparoscopic surgeon at Apollo Hospital, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad. Today we will look at some of the frequently asked questions about kidney stones. Kidney stones are very common and uh, most of the patients have got a lot of doubts and there are a lot of questions which patients come up with uh, which they require answers to so that they would know exactly what to do when somebody has got a kidney stone, how to prevent them, what care to take in patients with kidney stones and all the details about that. What are kidney stones? Kidney stones are basically crystals. These are basically like salt crystals which you see when there is concentrated salt water. So if you I simply understand that if you boil salt water, the water evaporates and the salt forms crystals. So basically kidney stones are not stones, they are basically crystals which form within the kidney because there is more amount of salt and less amount of water in the urine and these are colloquially known as kidney stones but they are actually what we call calliculi. What leads to formation of kidney stones? Kidney stones are formed because there is a large amount of solute which basically the salts within the urine. Uh, with less amount of water. So if you imagine that you take salt water and boil the salt water, the water evaporates and the salt forms crystals. So if you understand simple thing like that, then you would know why kidney stones form or how they form. If the amount of water in the urine is less and the large amount of calcium oxalate or phosphate or uric acid, one of those materials which can form crystals is more in the urine. These crystals form small crystals at the moment and after some time these crystals uh, attach to one another which is called crystal aggregation and these crystals finally grow into a kidney stone. What are the types of kidney stones? There are different types of kidney stones depending on the chemical composition. The commonest kidney stone which we see is what is called a calcium oxalate stone which basically has got calcium and a chemical called oxalate. The second common stone which we see is what is called calcium phosphate stones, different types of calcium phosphate stones but majority of the calcium phosphate stones form in infections within the kidney that is when the phosphates precipitate and produce stones. The third common type of stone which we see is what is called uric acid stones. We also see different types of stones rarely like cysteine stones, indianavir stones and different other chemicals which can produce kidney stones but the commonest kidney stones are either calcium oxalate or calcium phosphate or uric acid stones. How are kidney stones diagnosed? The commonest way to diagnose a kidney stone is by doing a scan. It could be either an ultrasound scan which is probably the quickest and the cheapest way of diagnosing a kidney stone but however the ultrasound scan can sometimes miss some of the stones particularly stones which are in the ureter which are lower down from the in the tube coming from the kidney. The best test to diagnose a kidney stone is a CT scan. A CT scan will pick up every kidney stone however small it is whether it has got calcium whether it is uh, radiolucent which is not seen on the x-ray. So the single best test to diagnose a kidney stone is a CT scan. What are the symptoms of kidney stone? Kidney stones can produce pain. Small stones within the kidney usually are asymptomatic and picked up on only routine ultrasound scanning. However, stones which are blocking the ureter or the flow of the urine from the kidney can produce very severe pain and the pain which is produced by kidney stones which is called renal colic is one of the severest pain which a human being can face. So it is so severe and this is spasmodic and this pain usually starts from the loin which is the part of the back uh, below the rib cage and then it radiates to the front of the abdomen. So the commonest presentation for patients with kidney stone is loin pain which is typically described as a loin to groin pain. So it starts in the loin and spreads to the groin which is the front of the abdomen. You can also see other symptoms like sometimes patients have burning when they pass urine, some patients have a bit of blood in the urine and some patients if there is an infection they can get fever, chills, rigors and all that. But the commonest presentation is severe colicky pain. How are kidney stones treated? Not all kidney stones require treatment. A large number of patients which we see or during a routine health checkup have small 2 to 3 millimeter kidney stones within the kidney somewhere in the calyces which is one of the corner of the kidney and these stones do not require any treatment. However, we do see patients who come with stones which are symptomatic that is which are blocking the flow of urine from the kidney. These could be stones within the center of the kidney, stones within the ureter that is the tube coming from the kidney. These sort of stones can block the flow of urine so that the kidney function can go down and also they can get uh, kidney failure, infections in the kidney and more importantly severe pain. So these sort of stones which require treatment are treated by different ways. 
Gone are the days when we were operating for kidney stones where a large cut was made to remove the kidney stones and today everything has been uh, minimally invasive surgery. We have a different types of endoscopes where we put a scope through the urine passage into the kidney and use a laser to break it and take the stone out. Uh, sometimes if there is a kidney stone is quite large, we do a keyhole surgery which is basically a small keyhole which we put in the back and through that we put an endoscope, use a laser to break the stones and remove the stones. So no more open surgery for kidney stones. All kidney stones are managed endoscopically either through a scope through the urine passage or putting a scope through the back by doing a keyhole. How long does it take for a person to recover from kidney stones? To recover from a surgery for a kidney stones depending on, depends on what type of procedure the patient underwent. If the patient undergoes what is called a ureteroscopy that is where we put a scope through the ureter or a RIRS which is called a retrograde intrarenal surgery, the patient typically stays in the hospital for 24 hours and we admit in the morning, we do the procedure and the next day morning the patient is discharged and we tell them to take rest for a day or two and then go back to whatever they were doing before. Sometimes we do a keyhole in the back. We tell these patients, these patients typically stay for two days and we tell them to take a rest for about a week. Rest in the sense not bed rest but avoid long distance travel, avoid strenuous activity for, a, for about a week. So in general it depends upon what procedure is done and most people recover within two to seven days. What is the age group that is affected by kidney stones? The commonest age group which we see for kidney stones is between 20 to 50 or maybe 20 to 45. So it's basically a disease of middle age where uh, we see a lot of these people who are uh, active in their life and therefore these kidney stones affect their quality of life as well as the job they do. So the age group is usually a middle age group. How can kidney stones be prevented? If you understand how kidney stones formed, that is the fact that there is less water in the urine and more calcium oxalate, phosphate or uric acid in the urine everybody can understand that the best way to prevent kidney stones is to drink water. So increase the amount of water content in the urine so that the water content to the calcium and oxalate content in the urine becomes less. So if the calcium content is less and the water content is more, crystals do not form in the urine. And if the crystals do not form, stones do not form. So the simplest way to prevent a kidney stone is to drink a lot of water. And particularly during the summer months when somebody is going out uh, during May, June when there is a very hot weather, there is a lot of sweating which we call insensible loss. These people lose a lot of water from the skin and also in the breath. And this is uh, not measured, this is very difficult to measure because this uh, water loss is, uh, you cannot quantify it. So basically they should drink a lot of water to prevent kidney stones. I think this video is quite informative. I would think this would answer most of the questions which patients come to us with which we call frequently asked questions and this uh, set of frequently asked questions would clarify most of the common questions which you see from the patients in day to day practice for, with regards to kidney stones, how they are diagnosed, how they are treated, how to prevent patients from coming back again and again with kidney stones. Hope this is useful.